don't they, Dougal? Oh, you're right there, Ted. Thanks, Arf! So then, you're a nun. <laughs> right, Sister Monica, I've left your bags in the hall. I thought before we dropped you at the boat, you might like to go and see the Holy Stone. The what? The Holy Stone of Clonrickard. Oh, great. It's one of the holiest lumps of rock in Europe, and you can get these magnificent souvenir combs there. <laughs> yeah, they're fantastic combs. I got this one last year, and you can see there they've written, I saw the Holy Stone of Clonrickard. <laughs> <laughs> the stone is great. We've seen it, I think, about 300 times. Well, why not? It would ride off the weekend. If you thought the Ludo night was exciting, <laughs> this will drive you right over the edge. <laughs> it's all been leading up to the Holy Stone. <laughs> What's so holy about it anyway, Father? Ah, it's just a general kind of holiness, you know. Father Dougal stood beside it there once for about ten minutes and he got a great sense of serenity. Yes, I, I got a great buzz off it. <laughs> well, why is it called the Holy Stone of Clonrecord? I thought Clonrecord was in Fermanagh. It is. The Holy Stone was up there. But it wasn't doing great business. <laughs> so, a treat in store for you. Well, wonderful. That'll be wonderful. I'll just go and freshen up. She'll be putting on makeup, I suppose. Huh? <laughs> Impress the lads, huh? <laughs> I know she's probably just going to the toilet. Are nuns great, though, Ted? It, it's good because you don't feel as nervous with them as you do with real women, do you? <laughs> ah, you're right there. Yeah. You know, even though I only got the courage to talk to her a few minutes ago, it's nice to have a nun around. Gives the place a bit of glamour, huh? <laughs> a woman's touch. Anyway, listen, I'd better go on and rouse Jack. I'll tell him we're off. Ted says you were touching him. <laughs> Father Jack, you all right there? Ready for another day? I'm off with Sister Monica now. If the milkman calls, the money's under the statue of our Lord being embarrassed by the Romans. All right, then? <laughs> Would you like a cup of tea before I go? Morning, Father. I know you won't mind us leaving you alone because Father Dougal got that new video for you. Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> it's probably not as violent as the ones you usually like, but sure, well, give it a go. What are you doing? This looks very bad, Ted. What? He's very drunk. Still, he must have been at it all night. Where does he hide it? I don't know. I haven't seen him this bad since that wedding in Clonus, Ted. Do you remember? Didn't he disappear off with Sister Imelda? <laughs> God, yes, the blue nun. <laughs> oh, no, Ted, look at this. Oh, God, hold this. Father, this is very bad. Do you not remember what the windoline did to you? <laughs> Father Jack, Father Jack, are you there? Ted. Imagine the damage floor polish would do you. My dear God. Ted. What is it? Uh, I'm in tremendous pain, Ted. <laughs> Put it down, then. Oh. God, Dougal. Come on, we'd better get him. Get him under the arms. Come on now, Father. Come on, we can't have Sister Monica seeing like this. Come on, big steps. What's the matter? <laughs> there you are, Sister Monica. That's just Father Jack's uh, motor. Takes a little time to get going in the mornings. He doesn't look well. Oh, he's grand. We're just taking him on a little trip to the toilet. We'll be we going on a little trip to the toilet, Father. Just put him down there in that chair and we'll have a look at him. <laughs> he doesn't like to be fussed over. Well, I really think you should let me look at him. 
mother of God. He's dead. What's the problem there, sister? Father, <laughs> Father Jack, he's dead. There's no pulse and he's stone cold. Come on now, Father. You're not dead, are you? He's very definitely dead. Come on, Father, the joke's over. Father, he's gone. I think you should go and get help. And Father Dougal here can give the sacraments. Right, well, I'll call Dr. Sinis, but frankly, I think you're making a big fuss about nothing. <laughs> The last rites, Father. All oh, right, yeah, of course. Uh, shouldn't we wait for Ted? Well, there's no need, really. Is there any anointing oil? Uh, no, I think himself drank it last week. <laughs> <laughs> you sure you wouldn't like to do the honours yourself? What? No, of course not. I suppose, I suppose I'm wearing the trousers as far as this job goes, I think. <laughs> right. Uh... Well, we are gathered here today to join two people... To Oh, sorry. That's not it, of course, yeah. Well, Father, best of luck. Oh, of course, yeah, there's more. Um, uh, sorry, didn't get a chance to see you off. I don't know if I should be talking to you down here or up there. I look up there. So anyway, you're there now with our Lord and Stalin and Bob Marley and, and the rest of them. And, uh, of course, my own parents... Uh, Actually, I'd like to take this opportunity to say hello to them. Uh, hello, Mammy and uh, Daddy. I uh, hope they're looking after you up there. And... The Latin father. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, totus tuus minimus canis costa corta bagio Roberto. <laughs> uh, oh, did you ring the doctor, father? Right, well, it looks bad, all right. I, uh... I called Dr. Sinner, I gave him the symptoms over the phone, and he said he's probably dead all right. The, the pulse not being there is uh, bad enough, but the heart stopping is the real danger sign. <laughs> that happened to my uncle, and he was fine afterwards. His heart stopped? For how long? Uh, a week. A week? Really? <laughs> and he was fine afterwards? Actually, no. Now I think of it, uh, he died. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's absolutely great to see. I mean, the level of commitment amongst the African church in bringing the faith to the people is just wonderful. It's marvellous, isn't it? Sure, I wouldn't know. I'm from Donegal. <laughs> <laughs> Will you have a sandwich, Father Cleary? Uh, oh, no, thanks, Mrs Doyle. I'm fine. Have a try. They're diagonal. Uh, so I see, but... Uh... <laughs> Uh, no, thanks, anyway. Ah, go on. Sure, they're only small. No, no, I'm going to... Are you sure you won't have one? Uh, no, thanks, Mrs Doyle. I, I ate before I came out. Would you like one for later? I could put it in a bag. Ah, no, no, don't bother. No, no. Here's a little bag you can bring one home in. No, no, no. And here's a bigger bag you can put the little bag into. No, no. And you can eat it later or you can eat it now if you want, whatever suits you. Oh, ah, no. you'll have one now. Ah, sure, I might as well. Mrs Doyle. I think Father Mackey would like a sandwich. Father Mackey, will you have a sandwich? <laughs> oh, I'm terribly sorry I'm late, Ted. Oh, the car, oh, the car broke down. That's all right. Father Faye, how are you? Oh, uh, ill I am. <laughs> he is. This was very quick. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I suppose so. In New Zealand and a sister in South Africa. Oh, why him, Ted? Why is it always the good ones? Oh, you bastard! <laughs> now, Father, he could have been Pope, Ted, but the feckin' Jesuits, they have it all tied up. <laughs> yes, yes. Imagine, Ted, a Polish Pope. It should have been Jack, but it's not what you know, is it? It's who you know. <laughs> ah, it's sad, but um, look at him there. He, he looks quite serene. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, no, 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 no! He's dead, Ted! Oh, we'll never see him again! <laughs> we'll see him in the next world. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, God, no! Get him down! Get him down! Off. 
Give me lots of drink. Oh, arse, back, drink, drink. Oh, Ted, you big fool. What are you doing, Dugan? <laughs> I don't think you should be getting up to this kind of nonsense. Come on now, up you get. You should leave his chair idle for a while. Did you ever look at that? <laughs> it's completely bald. <laughs> Smooth as a baby's behind. <laughs> You'd know all about that, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> what? You know, when you're baptising them, the babies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now, I'm going to give Sister Monica a lift down to the boat. Thank you, Father. Oh, no, it's the least we could do. You were always very good to Father Jack. It's the least we could do. Excuse me, Father Crilly. There's a woman here to see you. A woman, Mrs. Doyle. I think you mean a nun. Oh, no, 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 no. It's a woman, all right. A young woman with a skirt. <laughs> I'll be off then. <clears throat> Hello, Father Crilly. Yes? I'm from Corliss, Corliss and Sweeney. Oh, we're fine for coal, thanks. Uh, oh, no, it's nothing to do with coal. My name is Laura Sweeney. And this must be Father Maguire. Mm. <laughs> anyway, I think you both better sit down. I've got a bit of a shock for you. Before you say anything, I want to assure you that that was just a routine relocation of funds. Oh, no, no. No, the money was resting in my account before I actually put it on to you. No, you don't understand. This is about Father Hackett. Now, please, sit down and I'll explain everything to you. Now, it may come as a surprise for you to learn that Father Hackett left a will. Did he? <laughs> what does it say? Well, if I may. I, Father Jack Hackett, being of sound mind and body... <laughs> Sorry. ...leave my entire fortune to Father Ted Crilly and Father Dougal Maguire to be distributed equally amongst them and... I'll be, I'll be off now then, Father. <laughs> I'll make the way to the boat myself, then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bye, fathers. Yeah, bye. <laughs> Look at this, Dugan. Father Jack left us money. That's very nice of him. How much? Half. Half. Half a million pounds. <laughs> Half a million pounds? <laughs> Each? <laughs> oh, no. Between us. <laughs> It's only a quarter of a million each, Ted. <laughs> Ted. Ted? So that's that. Looks like you're going to be very rich men. Grand. There's just that sole requirement, which I'm surprised Father Hackett didn't discuss with you himself. Oh? When is the funeral again? Again? Well, we haven't had the first one yet, so... <laughs> no. Uh, sorry. Maybe I didn't make myself clear. It's tomorrow morning. Right. Well, you know about Father Hackett's terrible fear of being buried alive. Well, there's no chance of that now, is there? I mean, you know, like he's dead. <laughs> oh, yes, he was terribly frightened of that. That's why he wouldn't do confession. He didn't like enclosed spaces. Huh. Of course, he also just didn't want to do it. <laughs> A load of strangers telling you their sins. Sure, who'd be bothered with that? <laughs> well, Father Hackett... Father Hackett's fear was so great that he stipulated that you two must spend the night before the burial with him. OK, all right. Uh -huh. I suppose that's the least we can do. Anyway, we can discuss it with the solicitor. No, I am the solicitor. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm sorry, but I'm the senior partner in Corliss, Corliss and Sweeney. <laughs> now, come on now. Just because we're from the island, do you think you can have a bit of fun with us? Sure you. All right, all right. The big tickles from the island. <laughs> but we're not as thick as we look, eh? No way, Jose. Now, wait a second. <laughs> Why do you think I've been talking to you for the last hour and a half? Look, you're a lovely girl, but I really think we should talk to the solicitor. <laughs> if you're a solicitor, I'm boy George. <laughs> karma, 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 You come and go. You come and go. Karma, 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 chameleon. Oh, how's your head, Ted? Not too bad. But it's true what they say about these career women. They're very aggressive. <laughs> yeah, she was very aggressive, wasn't she, Ted? Oh, and the language out of her. You wouldn't hear of it from a docker. Ah, you would. They use very bad language. <laughs> F and this and F and that. It was worse than that, Ted. She was saying fuck. Now, Dougal! <laughs> A 
Anyway, who'd have thought Father Jack had half a million pounds? And he never said a word about it. There it was, lying in a bank account all these years. How did he get it all in the first place? Well, as far as I understand it, he was just an astute saver. He tried to avoid giving money to charity. He would wear trousers during the summer. That obviously saved a couple of bob in wear and tear. All sorts of little uh, savings here and there all over the place. It all adds up, you know. I suppose we only really knew him in his twilight years. But I think we saw the best of him. A really lovely man. A true knight of the church. Gentle. Lovely sense of humour. Patient. Good-natured. Sorry, Ted. Who's this now? <laughs> Who do you think I'd be talking about at this particular moment, Dougal? Well, I'm not sure. I didn't catch the start. <laughs> Jack, of course. All right, Jess, yeah. A great priest. First priest to denounce the Beatles? That's right. <laughs> oh, he could see what they were up to. And he loved children, of course. Oh, he did, yes. They were terrified of him, though. Well, he had that stick, you know, and he'd be waving that stick, and sure, maybe they thought he'd hit them. <laughs> I heard when he was teaching in St. Columns that he was a great believer in discipline. I can't get away from you. He was a good teacher. A friend of mine had him. Father Jimmy Ranibal studied under him for a couple of years. And he told me once, he said, no one, no one had such a huge effect on him as Father Jack. Father Jimmy Ranibal? Oh, yeah. Whatever happened to him? Do you remember the Drum Shanbo massacre? Yeah. <laughs> that was him. Oh. <laughs> Another thing about Jack. He loved a bit of competition. He had a great sense of fair play. <laughs> And a great traditionalist. He didn't agree with a lot of the modern thinking within the church. You'll burn for all eternity in hell! <laughs> hey! Funny. One moment you're here, the next moment. And in the happy no time of his sleeping, death took him by the hand. You know, someone once said that life is but a thin sliver of light between two immensities of darkness. Makes you think. Does, Ted. About what? <laughs> about death, Dougal. About death. That's very morbid, isn't it, Ted? What started you off thinking about death? <laughs> Still, it's good we have this time with them. Maybe sometimes we weren't always as thoughtful as we could have been. But at least now we're able to have this time with him. To treat him with the respect he deserves. Ah, uh, you're right there, Ted. Do you fancy an old game of charades? <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> right, so you go first. Right. I'll start. I'll give you an easy one with. Uh, fishing. Uh, gone fishing. <laughs> Something to do with boxing. Uh, one handed boxing. <laughs> You're not supposed to tell me, Ted. <laughs> OK. Film. One film. <laughs> One word. <laughs> Come on, Ted, you're making it a bit too easy for me. <laughs> not an Egypt, you know. Right, one word, film. Can't be too many of them. Salem's lot. <laughs> uh, tongue, uh, mouth, teeth. Uh, is there a film called Tongue? Tom Tongue. No. Um, it's, uh, tongue fish. S -s Swim tongue. Um, uh, uh, fish. Attack of the giant killing fish. Uh, tongue. Tongue fish. Uh, the deep. Uh, piranha. Jaws 2. Um, uh, oh, I'm close then. Uh, uh, Ghostbusters 2. <laughs> Superman 2. No. Um, Batman Returns. You had it. It was Jaws. No, I just too, Ted. It's a different film. It's a very different film. It's a different shark. <laughs> Ted, are you still awake, Ted? Yes. yes. Just want to ask you a question. Oh, not again, Dougal. Look, when a man and a lady are very much in love, no, then... No. <laughs> no, I didn't want to ask that, Ted. I just wanted to ask you, do you believe in an afterlife? Do I what? 
Do you believe in an afterlife? Well, Dougal, generally speaking, priests tend to have a very strong belief in the afterlife. <laughs> oh, I wish I had your faith, Ted. <laughs> Dougal, how did you get into the church? Was it like collect 12 crisp packets and become a priest? <laughs> Ted, Dougal, please let me go to sleep. I was just wondering, what are you going to do with your share of the money? Well, I... Uh, luckily, there are always lots of charity organisations that are grateful for money. There's Concern, uh, St Vincent de Paul, Food for Africa, Help the Aged. <laughs> And uh, maybe a few pounds for comic relief. <laughs> so, some good will come from Father Jack's death. It's hard to believe he's gone, though, isn't it, Ted? Ah, uh, you're right there. It's beginning to snow again. The flakes, silver and dark, falling obliquely against the lamplight. It's probably snowing all over the island. On the central plain, on the treeless hills, Falling softly upon the graveyards, upon the crosses and the headstones, upon all the living and the dead. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> Ted, Ted, what's wrong, Ted? Father Jack, did you see what happened? Ted! <laughs> what happened, Father Jack? What? Ooh! <laughs> So, there he is, risen from the dead, like that fella, E.T. <laughs> There's one thing that confuses me, though. Yes? Is Jack dead, then, or what? <laughs> Apparently not. The floor polish brought about all the symptoms of death, such as no heartbeat, rigor mortis, <laughs> decomposition. <laughs> but he was lucky. The effects just wore off him. It's good to have him back, though, isn't it? Hmm. <laughs> Who needs half a million pounds, anyway? <laughs> yes, sir. Our life is the spiritual life. <laughs> but to be honest, I don't like talking about this. But it's only a matter of time. I mean, he's not a young man. And, you know, and I suppose when he's gone, it won't be so bad. The money will be some kind of comfort to us. Well, that's something. Now, you better come down to the shops with me. I want to buy some more floor polish. <laughs> uh, maybe we should get a few different brands, you know, just to try them out, like. Yes, so we can leave them all around the house so they won't get lost. Or, or we could leave them in Jack's room and ask him to keep an eye on them. <laughs> Drink! <laughs> Take off! <laughs> <laughs>